Have you heard? Seattle is hosting a Worldcon. So, yeah. There's there's a lag. Grateful. Yeah. And uh, standing up here with me in the room are some of our division heads. I am the chair. My name is Kathy Bond. We have our division head for public uh, for programming, Sunny Jim. We have our division head for publications, Kevin Black. Yeah. Our division head for uh, finance, Angela, and our division head for exhibit services, Michelle. We also have many other staff members and uh, volunteers in the room. If you would like to stand up now and give a little wave, feel free. This is a voluntary thing, not mandatory. And then it is entirely possible we have more of, of our team online, but I can't see them. So therefore they do not exist uh, to me in this moment, not but they, ex they exist to me in your heart, in my heart, generally speaking. All right. So Worldcon is coming to Seattle in 2025. And to start, we, we do want to acknowledge that we are going to be hosting on the ancestral ancestral homelands of the Muckleshoot, Suquamish, Duwamish, Snoqualmie, and Tual uh, Tual Tulalip, Tulalip, I'm trying to say things too fast, uh, Tulalip, Tulalip peoples, Tulalip peoples along the waterways of the Salish Sea, along with 29 other federally recognized tribes in the state of Washington. This land acknowledgement is just a start. It doesn't take the place of, of actual action, uh, but it is a start and we want to acknowledge, uh, acknowledge that at this time. So that is uh, our Seattle, uh, Seattle in the, on the slide here. Um, and we are really excited uh, to bring this Worldcon to Seattle for the first time since 1961. And we really want to invite all of you to come and see what the Pacific Northwest community has, has to offer. Our vision for this Worldcon is that we are bringing you who are not uh, Pacific Northwest natives to Seattle to experience our community, but also giving our communities the chance to experience all of you and see, see what other communities have, uh, have to offer. Uh, because we think we learn from each other and when we create from each other, we can create really amazing things. So our tagline is, is building yesterday's future for everyone, which is an acknowledgement, um, acknowledgement that we have not successfully so far built the future that we have always aspired to, but we're continuing to work and we're inspired by the optimism that used to be there, particularly the last time Worldcon was in Seattle in 1961, with that sort of retro future, um, retro future aesthetic, and uh, ideals at that time. So we remember our yesterdays and possibly the the things we still have to still have to over overcome, and we're working uh, for a better future. And this goes way slower than I think it's going to. Okay, so yeah. So for uh, for those of you who've not uh, seen who our guests of honor are yet, we'd like to uh, introduce you to who they are now. Uh, our first up is our author guest of honor, Martha Wells. Uh, she's been a science fiction and fantasy author since her first fantasy novel was published in 1993. Her New York Times bestselling series, The Murderbot Diaries. No one's going to cheer for Murderbot, man. <laughs> uh, has won the Nebula Awards, the Hugo Awards, Locus Awards, and an American Library Association Yolsa Alex Award. Sorry, can't read. Um, her work also includes the books of Raxura series, and <laughs> Jesus Christ, <laughs> and many. But yeah, we're just going to go there, and many others. Um, she also has a lot of short fiction and everything. We are very, we just spent some time with her while she was on her book tour uh, up in Seattle. And so we are very excited uh, to have her, uh, have her as a guest of honor. Uh, we also, because the Pacific Northwest has uh, very much has a tradition of science guests of honor. We have our science guest of honor, Bridget Landry. She is a JPL engineer. And also, as you can see in the uh, picture she provided to us, a master costumer. Um, so she was educated as a chemist, chemist, planetary scientist, and works as an engineer. She has worked in robotic spacecraft operations for 35 years, including the Hubble Space Telescope, the Mar Mars Path, Mars Path Finder, and the Cassini mission to Saturn, and both the Curiosity and Perseverance rovers. 
uh, wearing her technical hat. Bridget has often been on sci science panels at world cons, as well as a lot of local and regional conventions. And uh, she's even judged at the masquerade uh, for Norwest Con. So she will bring she will bring plenty of science knowledge and a lot of flair uh, with all of her with all of her costumes. Our artist guest of honor is Donato Jean Cola. Jean, Jean Cola. You had it earlier. <laughs> I had it, or I swear I had this before. Uh, Donato's passion for narrative art has seen his work grace the covers of over 300 science fiction and fantasy novels, placed in hundreds of private and public collections, and landed numerous peer honors, including three Hugo Awards, two gold and six silver, two gold and six silver medals from Spectrum, the best in contemporary fantastic art, and numerous awards from the Art Renewal Center, the prestigious Hamilton King Award from the Society of Illustrators, and recognition from the Association of Science Fiction and Fantasy Artists with 23 uh, Chesley Awards. So we, <laughs> we are beyond excited uh, to have uh, to have his work uh, in our art show and available for all of you to see in person in 2025. And finally, uh, we have a musical guest of honor, Alexander James Adams, sort of celebrating the spirit of a lot of uh, filking and creating, um, uh, creating music out of our passions. That is why uh, we have Alexander uh, joining us uh, as a musical guest. So prepare to be wowed. Uh, by several, what I hope will be rocking concerts uh, for for everyone. And last, but certainly not least, our hosts, Kay Tempest Bradford and Nisi Shaw. So they will be uh, doing, uh, uh, doing all of the hosting duties at our convention. So you'll see them at our opening ceremonies, closing ceremonies, uh, and the Hugo Awards at the very least. Uh, and plus probably some some other special panels uh, as things develop. As we have said, Worldcon hasn't been in Seattle since 1961. This is what it looked like the last time you all uh, as a community, not you all individually, uh, were there. As you can see, the Space Needle was not even completed at that time. But this is what it looks like now. Any second now. <laughs> any, ah, any second now. There we go. This is what it looks like now. Yay. And then I hit a button and nothing happens. All right. So uh, while you're here, you can visit a lot of different things. You can visit the Mop MOPOP, the Museum of Popular Culture, which has both the monorail uh, coming out of it and also the Science Fiction Hall of Fame and Museum, uh, the historic. <laughs> Wait for it. <laughs> Pike Place Market. Uh, this is uh, within walking distance from our facility, the, the convention center, and there are over there, there are hundreds, like I think over two hundred different stalls and vendors that you will be able to buy uh, all sorts of different food, uh, different food there from, and gifts, and gifts, and then also you could visit this guy. <laughs> Maybe yes, you could visit this guy. He eats cars. Yeah. Um, among among other thing, among other things, the Fremont Troll in the center of the universe. That is Fremont. And there's also a lot of. Here we go. There's a lot of stunning outdoors stuff uh, that you can you can also investigate while you are here. This is actually a fairly good representation of what the weather will be like in August in Seattle. I know you don't believe me. Uh, because because you have read all of the hype about the gray and the rain, and it is lovely when it rains in Seattle, but it will look it will look more like this. Yeah. Yes, Worldcon is going to be held in not the sound. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna need a bigger speed, right? You're gonna need a bigger speed. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So this is the building uh, where where this where the convention where the convention would be held. It is the new expansion to the Seattle Convention Center. Uh, there are less. Um, there's there's none of the construction equipment is still there. This picture is is a little bit on the old side. Um, it is a great. Uh, it is a great facility. It is um, very customizable. 
It is brand new. Uh, it just opened this year. Uh, we will, um, and it's already been stress tested by Emerald City, uh, Comic Con, Sakura Con, and also PAX, so, uh, which are all much larger than we will likely be. So it's been stress tested by those events. Uh, we've gotten a lot of feedback from people who both attended those events and worked on those events to start incorporating into our plans. And um, yep, yeah. let's see. This is another picture. This is a picture from inside, uh, inside the, inside the building. Hasn't gone yet. Hasn't gotten there yet. Start tapping at like thirty seconds. I should. I really should. Yeah. Anyways, this thing when we did our when we did our tour. Uh, when we did our hard hat tour before the building was open to the public or completed, the guy on the tour was like, this is going to be amazing. It's going to be great. And he's describing it. It's like, this is called this hill climb. Everybody's going to be walking through. It's going to be fantastic. And I'm going, yeah, you're excited about a set of stairs. That's <laughs> That seems a little overblown and dramatic. But as you can see from it, this picture doesn't do it justice, but you can see this is an amazing sweeping view a sweeping view of the convention center. Uh, the next bit of space here that I'm showing you is just some of the uh, exterior space on floor three. This will be sort of gathering space that people will be able to use uh, in between panels because floor three is going to be one floor of our programming. You can see how lovely wide the corridors are once the okay, slide Okay, now we're not moving at all, guys. Changes. Yeah. That worked for All right, hold on. Oh, and now there's nothing. Oh, you killed it. Anyways, it's a lovely facility. <laughs> Eventually, you will see the picture that I see, but um, or otherwise, you are possibly just going to have to take our word for it. You can't, you nay, yay, now you don't have to take our word for it. Um, again. Yeah, so these, uh, this is, you know, outside of the, on floor three. And then, as you can see, these are the hallways uh, down among the, the different programming uh, programming rooms, which are on this monitor and my screen, but not that monitor. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> that's out and back to Zoom. So what we have in the room, okay. we can go that fast. Well, anyways, uh, eventually, if you don't see it right now, you can come up later after after this panel is over and look at a lovely picture of a hallway. I swear it's beautiful. Um, so Worldcon, as I said, Worldcon is going to be held in this building. We also have a tour that we a video tour of the facility that we did both with Sunny Jim and a friend of ours who's been advising us on some of our accessibility issues. Uh, she uses a power wheelchair, so you can see how she maneuvers and gets through the space as well. Uh, and that um, that video is available on um, on our website, on our website uh, and it will eventually be available on our YouTube channel once our YouTube channel gets gets up and gets up and going. So I'm just I'm not planning that you will see any of the rest of these slides, but I'm just going to make sure I don't forget anything. Oh, there's the hallway. Yeah. You see the hallway now. See, isn't it lovely? All right, but uh, basically we're 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 ending here with. Seattle is we have a have a map of the world and we've highlighted the state of Washington blue and then there are a bunch of arrows pointing to Seattle so that we all can so that we can invite you to all skedaddle to yeah. Seattle oh. in 2025. <laughs> all right. Sorry. Um here we have a suggestion that it's been a question you can keep that. Um so we do have some questions. Uh, I, I also remind people that uh, most uh, seated world cons and bids have answered questionnaire that answers a lot of your questions. It's available on the SmopCon website. If you have trouble finding it, see me after or, or ask any of the SmopCon folks. So we're going to try to skip over questions that were already answered. But having said that, we're going to ask some questions of Seattle that were already answered. Yeah. Uh, somebody wants to know how are the elevators? Um, and because some people are able to walk it, but there are people in wheelchairs who will need accommodation. Ah, okay, sorry. Um, I was going to go back to a picture of the elevators, but yeah, Jim, if, you, if you'd like to come up to a microphone and yeah. answer that. Since, since I've been in the building probably more than the rest of the team, there are two main banks of elevators, one on each side of the building. 
Um, it is perhaps fewer elevators than we would like because we would like all the elevators. Um, but there is also two entire banks of escalators for those who don't need the elevators. And we will be having signage up, encouraging those who can use the escalators to please use them and save the elevators for those who need it. If you are also asking about elevators for move in and move out, there are three large cargo elevators and two extra large freight elevators and 15. And in terms of uh, maneuvering around Seattle, this, is, uh, this information is in our questionnaire. It is also on our website under our accessibility tab. There is a great access crowdsourced uh, project that was started at the University of Washington about five or six years now that includes that includes a lot of data for people about you know the various sidewalks, the various intersections, what's available, what's there. So we really encourage people to to check that link out for very specific questions. In terms of from our hotels to the summit building, that particular part of Seattle is what I, I like to call relatively flat. Um, all of Seattle is on all of Seattle is on some some amount of grade, uh, but the the bits between those those parts the grade is maybe one percent. So like you can feel it maybe if you're really uh, drunk and not steady on your feet that you're you're walking uphill, but uh, otherwise it's it's not really really a thing. Uh, what social media are you using? Are you still using Twitter? Are you getting off of that using Blue Sky or Mastodon or any of the others? So as Esther said, Worldcon is built by volunteers and uh, supported a lot by volunteers. So we would really uh, we would really encourage anyone who wants to help us grow our social media presence to be on uh, different uh, different platforms to please reach out. We're gonna we we're in the process of developing a team for that. We are currently on Facebook. We are also still marginally on Twitter. We post announcements over there for the few people who still follow us there. We are all, we are on Instagram, uh, uh, but we are not currently uh, we are not currently on Blue Sky, Mastodon, TikTok, or Twitch. Um, yeah, do you want to just leave that to the questionnaire, folks? I mean. Uh... We, we will ask you to briefly expand as you care to on the question to some degree is addressed in your questionnaire about the human rights situation in your country or region. Uh -huh. If you want to just point people to the questionnaire, that so would be fine. We, we did, yeah, we did answer, answer a fair, a fair amount of that, a fair amount of that in, in our questionnaire. Um, you know, the human rights situation in Seattle is not, that a pre sorry i'm i'm getting a little distracted um is not appreciably different from the rest of the united states uh we do have some some further protections from many areas in terms of um in terms of gender uh, gender inclusivity uh the city of seattle mandates that all places with single use restrooms that they are all gender restrooms they are signed as such uh there's not a lot of uh pushback about that anymore um so that's um uh, but I am only play sometimes at being a human rights policy expert. Uh, so this is a very, that might be the extent of, extent of the answer for now. Uh, are you taking memberships here this weekend? We can. I like money um, and I like taking it from people. So you can always... <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so you can always register. You can always register online at, on our website, Seattle in 2025.org. Uh, so and there's a, a link to our Squarespace site where you can uh, buy buy both your Wiz your WizFizz membership and and your various supplements. If uh, you are having any difficulties with that, you can find uh, myself or anyone else up here. We can walk we can walk you through walk you through the steps. Or if you absolutely hate the idea of doing it yourself uh, in the privacy of your own hotel room, um, we can also take your money uh, with, through uh, through our square readers uh, while you're here. Any other questions? Seattle, thank you for your time. We'll be seeing you again. We're not getting the hybrid question? The virtual <laughs> question? Uh, the, oh, the, the hybrid question. Was that not? 
<laughs> Anyways, I'm going to answer the virtual question. Okay. Yes. <laughs> because I prepared it. I remembered it and I prepared an answer. Uh, so we are planning to have, you know, all of this is still uh, under development and planning, but we have a division head already on our team for virtual and hybrid integration. So we do plan to have virtual and um, online offerings uh, as part as part of our convention, as part of our convention. And we are baking it in from the beginning for developing that process so that hopefully it is seamless. <laughs> Thank you. We are moving slower than uh, we'd like, so we're going to shoo you off. Thank you.